Ben gazed at a framed photograph on his nightstand. It was a picture of his family, taken just a year ago. His wife, Sarah, stood beside him, her smile as radiant as the summer sun. Their two children, Tyler and Lily, were huddled close, their laughter echoing the joy Ben felt in that moment. They were the quintessential American family, loving, united, and happy. Or so he thought. At 45, Ben had achieved what many men only dreamed of. He had a steady job, a beautiful home, and most importantly, a family he adored. Their bond, forged over 14 years of marriage, felt unbreakable. Life wasn't always perfect, of course. Little did he know a storm was brewing, one that threatened to shatter the very foundation of their seemingly idyllic life. The memory of that sunny afternoon a year ago was etched in Ben's mind with agonizing clarity. It was a day like any other filled with the mundane rhythms of family life. The aroma of freshly baked cookies wafted from the kitchen, a testament to Lily's latest culinary adventure. Tyler was upstairs engrossed in a book, his laughter occasionally filtering down the hallway. The normalcy of it all made Tyler's revelation all the more jarring. Dad, Tyler began, his voice barely a whisper. I need to tell you something. I'm gay. Ben felt a wave of shock wash over him, followed by a surge of protectiveness for his son. I love you, son, he said, his voice firm and unwavering, and nothing will ever change that. The initial shock of Tyler's announcement gradually gave way to a different kind of turmoil. As Ben grappled with his own emotions, he became acutely aware of Sarah's silence. Her reaction, or lack thereof, was deafening. At first, Ben tried to rationalize her behavior. She just needs time to process this, he told himself, clinging to the hope that her silence was merely a defense mechanism, a temporary retreat before acceptance. However, Sarah's reaction was far from what Ben had hoped for. Her initial silence morphed into a chilling distance. She avoided any mention of Tyler's sexuality, her demeanor shifting to one of forced cheerfulness whenever he entered the room. The uncertainty gnawed at Ben, casting a shadow over their once joyful home. As weeks turned into months, Ben saw glimpses of hope. There were fleeting moments when Sarah would soften, engaging Tyler in brief conversations, even offering a rare smile in his direction. Ben clung to these moments, convincing himself that she was slowly coming to terms with Tyler's truth. He immersed himself in learning everything he could about the LGBTQ community. He wanted to be a pillar of strength for Tyler, a source of unconditional love and support. Just when Ben allowed himself to believe that Sarah was coming around, that their family would weather this storm, her words struck him like a bolt from the blue. They were discussing Tyler's future, college plans, career aspirations, when Sarah casually suggested, I've been looking into conversion therapy camps. Her tone was light, almost conversational, as if she were suggesting a summer camp or a new extracurricular activity. His heart pounded in his chest, a sickening dread settling in the pit of his stomach. Conversion therapy? Ben echoed, his voice barely a whisper. The room seemed to shrink around him, the air thickening with unspoken tension. Sarah, oblivious to the turmoil swirling within him, continued as if they were discussing a trip to the grocery store. Yes, she chirped, her tone unnervingly cheerful. I've been doing some research and I think it could be really beneficial for Tyler. You know, help him sort through his feelings, find the right path. Ben's mind reeled. He stared at Sarah, his mind struggling to reconcile the woman he thought he knew with the one uttering such monstrous suggestions. This was his wife, the mother of his children, talking about sending their son away to be fixed. Sarah, Ben began, his voice strained. Are you serious? Conversion therapy is, it's barbaric, dangerous. Sarah's response was swift and chilling. Don't be ridiculous, Ben, she scoffed, her voice laced with a dismissive edge. It's not barbaric. It's about helping people like Tyler overcome their struggles, find their true selves. Ben recoiled as if she had slapped him. Tyler is gay, Sarah. That is his true self. And there is nothing to overcome, nothing to fix. The argument that followed was like none they'd ever had before. In its place was a raw, visceral clash of values, a chasm opening up between them, threatening to swallow them whole.
But Sarah remained unmoved. She countered his arguments with platitudes with thinly veiled accusations that he was enabling Tyler's confusion. Their arguments became a nightly ritual, a toxic dance of accusation and denial. The once warm atmosphere of their home grew heavy with unspoken words, the air thick with tension. Ben found himself walking on eggshells, terrified of saying or doing anything that might trigger another confrontation. The laughter that once filled their home was replaced by an unsettling silence, a constant reminder of the rift that had torn their family asunder. Through it all, Tyler remained blissfully unaware of the battle raging around him. Ben made it his mission to shield his son from Sarah's hurtful words, from the knowledge that the woman who had brought him into the world could harbor such harmful views. He redoubled his efforts to create a safe space for Tyler, showering him with love and acceptance. He engaged him in conversations about his day, his friends, his dreams for the future, careful to avoid any mention of the storm brewing within their home. At times, the weight of his secret, the knowledge that his wife was considering such a drastic and harmful course of action, threatened to crush him. He found himself withdrawing from Sarah, seeking solace in late-night walks, the solitude offering a temporary respite from the turmoil that had become his life. Doubt gnawed at Ben's resolve. He had always believed in the sanctity of marriage and the importance of family unity. But as the days turned into weeks, the chasm between him and Sarah seemed to widen, the gulf of misunderstanding becoming an unbridgeable abyss. He loved Sarah, or at least he thought he did. But the woman he saw now, the one who could contemplate subjecting their son to such cruelty, filled him with a mixture of revulsion and despair. The thought of divorce once unthinkable began to take root in his mind, a tiny seed of doubt that grew with each passing day. For the sake of their children Ben and Sarah settled into an uneasy truce. The arguments subsided replaced by an icy silence that spoke volumes. They interacted like actors on a stage, their smiles forced, their words measured carefully chosen to avoid reigniting the flames of discord. Ben continued to shower Tyler with love and support, making it clear that he accepted him unconditionally. He knew that he couldn't control Sarah's actions, but he could create a haven for his son within the confines of their home. But the peace was fragile, a house of cards waiting to topple. Ben knew he had to be Tyler's rock, his advocate in a world that seemed determined to push him back into the shadows. He threw himself into research, devouring books, articles, and online forums dedicated to understanding the LGBTQ community. He learned about the struggles, the triumphs, the fight for acceptance that defines so many lives. He stumbled upon stories of young people subjected to the horrors of conversion therapy, their spirits broken, their identities shattered. The stories filled him with a cold fury, a visceral need to protect Tyler from ever experiencing such trauma. He vowed to be a shield for his son, a bulwark against the ignorance and prejudice that threatened his well-being. Ben sought out support groups for parents of LGBTQ children, finding solace in shared experiences and the comforting knowledge that he was not alone. He resolved to be an outspoken ally, to challenge prejudice and misinformation whenever he encountered it. Ben started small, bringing home books with LGBTQ plus themes placing them casually on the coffee table, hoping to spark a conversation, to build a bridge of understanding with Sarah. He envisioned family movie nights featuring films and documentaries that celebrated diversity that showcased the richness and beauty of the LGBTQ plus experience. He encouraged Tyler to talk about his interests, his friends, his life, creating a space where he could be his authentic self without fear of judgment. He listened intently, offering words of encouragement, his heart swelling with pride at his son's courage and resilience. Ben knew that education was the key to combating ignorance, to dismantling the harmful stereotypes that fueled prejudice and discrimination. He clung to these hopes, these small acts of defiance, as he navigated the minefield of their fractured family life. Within the walls of their home Ben tried to create a sanctuary for Tyler, 
a space where he could be himself, free from judgment and fear. He decorated Tyler's room with posters and artwork that celebrated diversity that reflected his son's burgeoning identity. He made a conscious effort to use inclusive language to challenge any casual homophobic remarks that Sarah might let slip. He wanted Tyler to know that he had an ally in his corner, someone who would always fight for him, who would always love and accept him for who he was. He cherished the moments of normalcy, the shared laughter over dinner, the quiet evenings spent watching movies together. These moments, however fleeting, gave him hope, fueled his determination to keep his family together, to weather the storm that threatened to tear them apart. The walls of their home, once a source of comfort and security, began to feel like a prison, the silence deafening, the tension palpable. Ben found himself retreating into his work, finding solace in the familiar rhythms of his job, a welcome distraction from the turmoil that had become his life. He dreaded coming home, dreaded the forced pleasantries, the carefully constructed facade of normalcy that crumbled with every muttered word, every unspoken accusation. The life had drained from their marriage, leaving behind a hollow shell held together by duty and the desperate hope that things might somehow miraculously get better. Sleep offered little respite, his nights haunted by nightmares of Tyler being sent away, his pleas for help echoing in the darkness. He felt increasingly isolated, adrift in a sea of uncertainty, unsure of who to turn to, afraid to burden his friends and family with the depths of his despair. The weight of his secret, the knowledge that his wife harbored such harmful views, became a heavy cloak, suffocating him stealing his joy, his energy, his very essence. He felt like a fraud, smiling for Tyler's sake, pretending that everything was fine, while inside, his world was crumbling. He tried to talk to Sarah, to reason with her, to explain the devastating consequences of conversion therapy, but his words fell on deaf ears. She met his pleas with icy silence, her eyes cold, her expression shuddered, a stranger hiding behind the mask of the woman he thought he knew. Their conversations, once filled with laughter and shared dreams, were now strained, stilted affairs, carefully navigated minefields of unspoken accusations and resentments. The joy had drained from their marriage, leaving behind a hollow shell of what it once was. Lily, their perceptive and sensitive daughter, retreated further into herself, her once infectious laughter replaced by a quiet solemnity. Ben noticed the way she watched them, her brow furrowed with worry, her eyes reflecting the unspoken tension that permeated their home. He tried to shield her from the worst of it, making an extra effort to spend time with her, to engage in her games and stories, to create a bubble of normalcy in their increasingly chaotic world. But he knew that she felt the shift, the subtle but profound change that had settled over their family. He ached for his daughter, for the innocence that was slowly slipping away, replaced by a maturity beyond her years. He wished he could protect her from the pain, the confusion, the fear that had become their constant companions. He saw the toll it was taking on her, the way she clung to him a little tighter, her need for reassurance a constant reminder of the fragile peace they clung to. He knew he couldn't keep up the charade forever, that the truth would eventually come out, but for now, he held on to hope, praying for a miracle, a way to mend his broken family. For a fleeting moment, a sliver of hope pierced the darkness that had descended upon Ben's world. He'd stumbled upon an article, a beacon of reason in the sea of misinformation surrounding conversion therapy. It detailed the American Psychological Association's stance on the practice unethical, harmful, and lacking any scientific basis. He printed the article, the crisp white paper feeling like a lifeline in his trembling hands. This, he thought, this would be the key to unlocking Sarah's compassion, to showing her the error of her ways. He would sit her down, calmly and rationally explain the dangers, the trauma that conversion therapy inflicted upon vulnerable youth. That evening, with the article resting prominently on the kitchen table, he waited for Sarah. He rehearsed his words, carefully choosing each phrase, each statistic, each heart-wrenching anecdote, hoping to break through the wall of denial she had built around herself. When she finally arrived, her demeanor weary from work, he met her with a gentle smile. 
his voice carefully neutral as he broached the subject. Sarah, he began, I found this article. I thought we could read it together, have a discussion about it. Sarah's reaction was not what Ben had anticipated. Instead of curiosity or a willingness to engage, her face hardened, a familiar mask of defiance settling upon her features. She waved a dismissive hand at the article, her words sharp, laced with a coldness that sent a shiver down Ben's spine. Ben, we've been over this, she said, her voice flat, devoid of the warmth that once drew him in. I've done my research. These camps, they help people like Tyler. Help, Ben echoed, his voice rising in disbelief. Sarah, they don't help. They torture, they break, they leave scars that never heal. He pushed the article towards her, his finger tapping on the APA's statement, his heart pounding against his ribs. This isn't just my opinion, Sarah. This is the consensus of the medical community, the scientific community. Conversion therapy is abuse. But his words were met with a chilling indifference. Sarah refused to even glance at the article, her gaze fixed on some distant point beyond the kitchen wall, a wall that seemed to grow higher, thicker with each passing moment. Frustration gnawed at Ben, hot and sharp, threatening to consume him. He wanted to shake Sarah, to scream, to make her see the monster she was becoming, but he held himself in check, clinging to the last vestiges of hope. Sarah, please, he pleaded, his voice strained. He reached for her hand, but she flinched at his touch. The rejection sent a lance of pain through his chest. A wave of nausea washed over Ben, a sickening realization settling in the pit of his stomach. This wasn't just a difference of opinion, a disagreement over parenting styles. This was a fundamental clash of values, a betrayal of the trust and love that had formed the foundation of their marriage. He looked at Sarah, truly looked at her, and saw not the woman he loved, but a stranger, her eyes cold, her heart hardened against their son. The realization hit him like a physical blow, stealing his breath, leaving him gasping for air in the suffocating confines of their shattered reality. You would really do that? he whispered, his voice hoarse with disbelief and a burgeoning despair. You would send our son away to be broken, to be forced to deny who he is. The silence that followed his question was deafening, filled only with the hum of the refrigerator and the ticking of the clock on the wall, each tick a hammer blow to his soul. Sarah's silence was all the answer he needed, a confirmation of his worst fears. In that moment, something within Ben snapped. The weight of his secret, the burden of protecting Tyler from Sarah's rejection, became unbearable. He loved his wife, or at least he had loved the woman she once was, but he loved his son more. I won't let you do this, Ben said, his voice low, steady, the quiet strength in his tone surprising even himself. I will fight you every step of the way. I will protect Tyler from you, from anyone who tries to harm him, to take away his light. He rose from the table, the printed article fluttering to the floor, forgotten in the face of this new resolve. He looked down at Sarah, his gaze unwavering, his heart heavy with a grief so profound it threatened to swallow him whole. I thought I knew you, he said, his voice thick with unshed tears. I thought we were a team, that we would face anything together. But I see now that I was wrong. He turned and walked away, leaving Sarah standing there, her face unreadable in the dim kitchen light. As he climbed the stairs to Tyler's room, a single thought echoed in his mind, I will protect my son, no matter the cost. Ben paused outside Tyler's door, hearing the muffled sound of music and laughter. For a moment he allowed himself to be soothed by the sounds of his son's carefree joy, a stark contrast to the turmoil raging within his own heart. He had made a choice, a choice that would have far-reaching consequences for his family. He would protect Tyler, even if it meant tearing their family apart. The thought filled him with a profound sadness, a deep ache for the life they once had, the future he had envisioned. He knew that divorce would be painful, messy, a long and arduous journey. He worried about the impact it would have on Lily, on her youthful innocence, on her sense of security. But he also knew that staying in a loveless, fractured marriage one poisoned by Sarah's rejection of their son, would be far more damaging in the long run. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for the difficult conversations to come. He had a family to protect, a son to love and cherish, a daughter to guide through the choppy waters ahead. 
The path forward would be fraught with challenges, but he would face them head on, his love for his children, his compass, his guiding light. Ben retreated to his study, the sanctuary he had built within their home now feeling more like a cage. Books lined the walls, testaments to a life he thought he was building, a future he believed was secure. Now they mocked him with their silent judgment, their words failing to offer solace in the face of his shattering reality. He sank into the worn leather of his armchair, the familiar scent doing little to soothe his frayed nerves. The silence of the room pressed in on him, amplifying the turmoil raging within his mind. He had never felt so alone, so utterly adrift in a sea of uncertainty. The weight of his decision, of the path he saw unfolding before him, pressed down on his chest, stealing his breath. He had always believed in the sanctity of family, in the strength of the vows he and Sarah had made. Now, those vows felt like chains, binding him to a future filled with pain, with the constant agonizing erosion of love. He closed his eyes, willing himself to find a solution, a way to mend his broken family. But the only images that came were shards of shattered dreams, the echoes of Sarah's chilling words, pronouncements of rejection that cut him to the core. The silence in the house was deafening, a heavy blanket smothering the remnants of their once joyful life. Ben could hear the faint hum of the refrigerator, the ticking of the grandfather clock in the hallway, each sound a sharp reminder of the emptiness that had settled over their home. He longed to talk to someone to share the burden of his grief, the fear that gnawed at his resolve. But who could he confide in? His friends, their lives filled with the blissful normalcy of intact families wouldn't understand. His parents, their generation grappling with the changing landscape of love and acceptance, would offer well-meaning but ultimately unhelpful platitudes. He was trapped, alone with his thoughts, the weight of his secret a crushing burden. He thought of Tyler, of the innocence that still clung to his son's laughter, and knew that he couldn't stay silent forever. He had to protect Tyler, to shield him from the storm that was about to break. But how? How do you explain to a child that the world isn't always kind, that the people who are supposed to love you unconditionally can harbor such darkness in their hearts? The sound of Lily's laughter pierced through Ben's despair like a shard of sunlight. He clung to that sound, a reminder of innocence to protect, fueling his determination. Lily's bright eyes reflected a world untouched by adult complexities. He couldn't bear her innocence being shattered. He knew he couldn't shield her from the truth forever, but he was determined to create a safe and loving environment. He would tell her the truth, age appropriately, honestly. He would make it clear that this wasn't her fault. The ghosts of futures past. Memories, once cherished treasures, now haunted Ben's waking hours like vengeful ghosts. He saw images of family vacations, Sarah's laughter echoing through sun-drenched amusement parks, their children's faces alight with joy. He remembered holidays, the warmth of their shared traditions, the comfort of familiar rituals. Each memory was a painful reminder of what he had lost, of the future he had envisioned slipping away like sand through his fingers. He had believed in their love, in their shared dreams, in their ability to weather any storm. Now, he saw the cracks in the foundation, the fault lines that had been there all along, hidden beneath the surface of their everyday lives. He had thought they were building a life together, brick by brick, their love the mortar that held it all together. Now, he saw that the mortar had crumbled, leaving behind a structure too unstable to withstand the weight of their differences, the chasm that had opened between them. He mourned the loss of that future, the shared dreams that now seemed as distant and unattainable as stars in the night sky. But even in his grief he felt a flicker of determination. He would build a new future for himself and for his children, one built on a foundation of love, acceptance, and unwavering support. Ben knew he couldn't stay in this limbo forever. The weight of his secret, the constant tension in the house was taking its toll on everyone. He had to act, to protect Tyler, to salvage what he could of their family. He made a decision, he would confront Sarah one last time. He would appeal to her sense of reason, to her maternal instincts, to the love he prayed still flickered somewhere within her. 
He knew it was a long shot, a desperate gamble, but he owed it to his son to try. He would tell her that he knew about the conversion therapy camp, that he understood her fears, her desire to fix their son, but he would also make it clear that he would not stand idly by while she subjected Tyler to such cruelty. He would fight her, legally, financially, with every fiber of his being to protect his son. He knew that this conversation would likely be the end of their marriage, but he was prepared to face that heartbreak, to endure the pain of separation if it meant giving Tyler the chance to live a life free from shame, from the fear of rejection by the people who were supposed to love him unconditionally. As Ben prepared for the confrontation to come, he felt a strange sense of calm settle over him. The decision had been made, the die cast. He couldn't change Sarah's mind, couldn't erase the hurt she carried, but he could control his own actions, his own response to the situation. He would approach her with compassion, with understanding, but also with an unshakable resolve. He would offer her the opportunity to seek counseling, to educate herself about the LGBTQ community, to find a path towards acceptance. But he would also make it clear that her journey was her own, and it would not come at the expense of their son's well-being. He knew the path ahead would be difficult, filled with uncertainty and heartbreak. But he also knew that he was not alone. He had the love and support of his children, the strength of his convictions, and the unwavering belief that love, in its purest form, could conquer even the darkest of shadows. He took a deep breath, the air filling his lungs with a renewed sense of purpose. He had a family to protect, a future to rebuild, and he would face the challenges ahead with courage, with grace, and with the unwavering love of a father determined to do right by his children. The weight of the unspoken hung heavy in the air as Ben sat across from Sarah at their kitchen table. The remnants of a meal lay untouched between them, a silent testament to the chasm in their lives. He had rehearsed this conversation countless times, each ending in disaster. Yet facing her now, he felt a strange sense of calm. Sarah, he began, I know about the camp. The words hung in the air, shattering their facade. A flicker of surprise crossed her face, replaced by defiance. The silence stretched, each tick of the clock a hammer blow. I understand you're concerned, Sarah replied. Tyler's young, he needs guidance, a chance to find his way. Ben drew in a breath, the words catching in his throat. Guidance? He echoed, his voice rising with disbelief. Sarah, this isn't about finding his way. This is about forcing him to deny who he is. He saw the flash of anger in her eyes, her hands tightening around her mug. He knew he was walking a tightrope, each word carefully chosen. He couldn't afford to alienate her, not yet. This isn't about you, Sarah. This is about Tyler, about loving and accepting him for who he is. He needs our support, our unwavering love. We can get through this, Sarah, but we have to do it together, as a family. Love, true and unwavering, can guide us towards a brighter horizon, together.